Right, so morning everybody. It's Friday morning, uh, September the 17th. Uh, we're down at the Eurotunnel uh, Park Up. I was at work last night till about nine o'clock. Helen come and pick me up, nip me home to the House of Bricks. Had a quick look at what work had been done for the day and uh, then we set straight off. We're just now gonna go and check the, check the dog in, get it all sorted. Uh, hopefully the animal health certificate will be up to scratch. Don't even say it. <laughs> Don't even say it. Yeah, I think it's going to be all right, but we'll see. Right, we've been successful. She's passed. There was one small discrepancy on the animal health certificate, which was the date of the microchip reading which should be the date that it's inserted not the date that the vet reads and confirms that your dog but the person who's just came to the booth next to us to check in has also had the same thing done on his animal health certificate fortunately she could cross reference it on her old UK pet passport but his is a puppy and doesn't have a pet passport so don't know what's going to go on there I've heard at Portsmouth the ferries uh, have been a little bit stricter and they're actually sending people home and refusing boarding without even bothering to try and check or confirm that it's, it's done or it's legitimate. But that's a real shame because that's 160 quid and if you've got to cancel your crossing and find an emergency vet it will do you another one and the emergency vets are doing them at a cost of about £250 for some of that used to cost us 40 quid and lasted a lifetime and these are every four months well thank you for that everybody who voted but hey ho glad we got to make our own rules right so we're on all checked in on our way then you have reached your destination. So we're just approaching the air. You can see the sign there, air to services. It's quite a squeaky narrow little road. It's just down here by the uh, by the river. Right, we're waiting between the river and the canal. Uh, it looks quite full. Um because it's very Mark early in the morning. Yards. You have reached your destination. But we shall see what we can do. So, we parked up right next to the river. Um, I'm going to keep the noise down because it is still quite early in the morning. But I've come out to uh, just give the dog a, a little exercise and then we're going to get some sleep. We're very tired. So um, it's a bit of a m misty old morning. It's a rather nice church thing over there somewhere. Um, I think it's going to be a bit cloudy today, but uh, hopefully it'll be nice tomorrow wherever we are. Um, we're hoping to find a vet this afternoon. So we can go and get the the dog a pet passport. So I'll speak to you later when I'm feeling a little bit more human. It's been a successful day. We got over okay on the animal health certificate and our first stop of our choice vets and we managed to get Buffy a, a French pet passport. So no more spending 160 pounds a time to leave England and be restricted to four months. 
for the rest of her life she can travel in and out of the EU as much as she pleases as well as other countries uh, it's much steppered we actually this was our first and last stop on our autumn trip last year as well uh, a little village called Eskelbeck uh, it's just got a few spaces maybe four or five the ones over there are not proper camper van spaces but it's quiet it's got the chateau over there a bit of town uh, this is your standard uh, relayus point you can empty your loo you can get a jet on which is a toke on from the frittery in the village to get fresh water and a bit of electricity if you need it you've got your drop off for getting your van over to dump your grey waste down but yeah it's just a, a great little spot I think we're actually in the same parking spot that we were in last year as well so it's all a bit familiar but it was such a relief to get that pet passport done which means now we can enjoy the next 59 days the next three years well without having to worry Helen's in there somewhere I'm making a baguette Ah, <laughs> look like that baguette vino yeah I, I have to speak like that now because I've got a French dog yeah the dog uh, in un buffy on bon chien she's just had some French stick uh, she had some French bread yeah okay right well there is a bar here that serves a beer from the big book last year when we came twice of course it was locked down and it was shut so we will go and find the beer but i'm gonna we'll start that again beer bar that serves the beer from the thousand and one beers to drink before you die and it'll be another one ticked off the list what it's been a tiring day it's been a good day and there's going to be a lot more to come It was a hundred years ago or more that some of these men came here and they paid the ultimate price for doing what their country asked them or maybe just going because their friends had gone but this is Cambrai there's 44,000 names on the walls behind us and in 20 days of fighting 94,000 men on both sides were lost or killed. 
20 days. Average of 5,000 lives lost a day. That's sort of pushing way past in terms of the Battle of the Somme and so on. But this area is always strange to drive through because you're constantly reminded of the loss that occurred all that time ago. We must have passed a dozen cemeteries or more. Some of them were large, like we could see Vimy Ridge as we drove past it and others. Some of them were small. Nearly every village had a small cemetery. We came here to Cambrai to have a look at this one because in, 20, in 1917 Cambrai was the forefront of where technology tried to change and to end the war, the trouble with the trenches. This is where the first major tank battle took place and the British used upwards of 200 tanks to try and break the German line. The Germans pushed back, they used whatever technology they'd got, shell fire to tip rip tank, tanks tracks off, even to the extent that the Germans realised that if they turned their bullets round in their service rifle, rifles so that the flat ends face forward, they could punch through armour rather than them ricocheting off at close range. But it was a technique that worked. And we love coming to places like this just to remember and see. It's a fine day late in September, so it would have been about 104 years ago. But they gave their time and they gave their lives. Well, we always say that when local, drink local. So we picked up this bottle of cider, uh, which is a cider of Normandy. We're going to give it a try. Whilst also not quite so local, we were drinking this very large box of Merlot. It's, it's local. It's from France. It was about 13 euros, which I'm going to say is about 11 quid. And it's a 5 litre bottle. We will let you know how this goes on. So, it's a Verger's. It's a nice golden colour. Not overly fizzy. A 
Oh, it's quite sharp, but yeah, it's very tasty. 4%, you could knock that all day long. Lovely. We're not doing our normal tasting notes because it's so hot, I'm sort of looking like Tarzan's skinny brummy cousin and Helen's done up like she's going to bed in the middle of winter. <laughs> And nobody, on, nobody needs to see that. Well, she'll shout at me and go, mm. I told you to keep the camera off me. I told you to keep the camera off me. Well, that's Saturday night for us. We'll see what Sunday brings. Morning, everyone. Sunday the 19th. You only know that because you've just read it. I didn't. I looked at the time, actually. It's 10 to 9. And Helen is just getting our breakfast sorted. Oh, a bit of scrummy egg. Scrummy, scrummy egg. egg. Toast. And tiny, tiny, tiny toast. Tiny toast, because we went to the shop to get bread yesterday, and she picked a loaf up, and then noticed all the fresh bread was behind the counter. <laughs> was too afraid to put the bread back and ask for some more. <laughs> but that's the way we roll. But this is just a, a nice, quiet Sunday. Uh, getting ready to set off towards Epinay, uh, which... I think the air there is actually shut so we've got two other options for um, our overnight stop both of which will be free and we will have a look but it's been a very quiet night here uh, absolutely very very quiet and pitch black they said the lights come on at 10 o'clock but of course we were in bed way 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 before that either probably about quarter past to half past nine so we didn't see if the lights come on or not but it was pitch black anyway we're about to have our breakfast then we're gonna get over the service point uh, empty our grey waste and sort everything else out see you later this monument was erected to commemorate the 90,000 American servicemen who died in the First World War from 1917 to 1918. They get a lot of stick for entering the war late but when they did come they served and pushed hard lots of young men who could have stayed in America and not get involved in the European war. But they did well and they helped us out. We couldn't have carried on losing people they did. They came fresh, with fresh tactics, fresh men and fresh arms and fresh ideas. Young captains served in the First World War, such as Patton, Bradley, Omaha, who would all later come back 23 years later and fight as generals in the same countryside that they'd fought as earlier as young men.
Well, this very straight bit of road we've just looked up because we kept seeing the signs is the Chemin de Dames, and it is literally the ladies' room. The two daughters of Louis King, the King Louis the Fifteenth used to travel from Paris to their chateau along this way, and it was a very famous route. So they named it after them. Well, it's not been bad. It's pretty straight, nice labelled, steady at 50 mile an hour, all is good. it's Sunday evening we've just had a little walk around uh, Muvial Lab whatever this place is <laughs> down from Epinay I should have really thought of it but this is what it's like when you're on the jog on for three days uh, but it's a big champagne region unfortunately everywhere shut on a Sunday that's okay yes. that's, that means that we have to stay for another day stay for another day and we're in local drink local but we hope you've liked the first few days of our trip. The Destination Lost, which was Helen's title. It's because been nice to have you along. Yeah. So, have a good evening. Hopefully this video will be up on Sunday night. And it's just the first few days. See you later. Take care.